Well, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, whatever time it is that you are watching us here on Walking the Path Travel with Lady V. I am excited as always when I'm here in the studio to have a special guest. In this particular situation, it may be a little heart jerking. It may be something that make you stop and think. This is a silent situation that comes up, but yet and still, even with a silence, we see it all across everyone's faces. Different people have to deal with all sorts of different things. And one thing that we get shh, we hush hush about, and that's domestic violence. On this particular evening, I would love to have you to welcome my guest, Victoria, here where she would tell her story about her situation with her domestic violence. Well, Victoria, welcome. Thank welcome. you. <laughs> I am excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here, and I thank you for having me. More, you're more than welcome. You and I crossed paths, and when I heard your story, I said that this is something that needs to be told. Right. Domestic violence. Yes. <laughs> and there's all types of violence that happens in the situation with domestic violence, but as I said before, because of things have had happened from years to years to years and generation, it was always shh. Yeah, don't tell. It was. Exactly. Don't tell what's going on in the exactly. house. Exactly. Or you see and you don't see. Exactly. Right. But yet and still you wear the scars. Oh, forever and a day. Physically, mentally, and emotionally. Yes, ma'am. So let's start with your story. Let everyone know. Uh let's begin to start out. How did you get there? Um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm the product of, well, I won't say the product, but I'm a, um, I was molested when I was young. Okay. I was molested when I was young. And I suffered abuse pretty much my whole adolescent years. Mm -hmm. And then when I became a teenager and a young adult, it made it extremely easy for me to fall in the hands of an abuser because that's all, to a certain degree, that's all I knew. So now when you said you were in your younger years and you were abused, what type of abuse are we talking about? Um, I was sexually molested when I was 10 to 10, 11 to about 13. So now that sounds like somebody that's in the family. It was, yes, okay. yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Um, it was a, um, it wasn't a family member per se, uh, uh, by law, in law. Okay. Okay. And then, um, you know, just to be honest, my, my home life wasn't the greatest. Okay. Um, you know, in her defense, my mom was young. Okay. We basically grew up together. Okay. And she didn't really know how to rear, you know, a child, uh, you know, at that time. So in her situation, was she already married or was it, you know, out of wedlock? It was out of wedlock. Okay. It was out of wedlock. All right. And I, I believe in my heart she did the best she could. Exactly. Yeah. So then my grandmother ended up taking me. Oh, okay. And so my grandmother okay. raised me. All right. Yeah. yeah. So even though my grandmother and my uncles, they showed me all this love, yeah. but by the time I got to them, I was already damaged goods. And so now when you came to them about what age? I got with my grandmother um, right after my 13th, 13th, 14th. Oh, yeah. That's when okay. I got, yeah. And by that time, all the damage had been done. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so even though they did all they could to, you know, show me all this unconditional love, right. um, it just, you know, I, in the back of my mind, it, mm -hmm. I still felt the, the um, no self-worth. Right. You know, I, I still felt like, you know, I, I deserve to be abused. I deserve mm -hmm. to be whatever that wasn't good. And this is the thing that I, I'm hearing from many people when they have gone through this situation because they don't know anything else. Right. So until they find out something differently, this is normal. Now, let's go in and, and speak a little bit about um, the time frame. How many years back was this? Are we talking about 20 years, 30 mm, years? Um, 2002, I finally got out of it completely. Okay. I divorced him and everything. I finally, in regards to the my husband. I, uh, so but, now, what I'm speaking about is your age at 13. Because what I like to do is give my viewers an idea of exactly the era. Okay, I got you. What, okay, I you got know, you. Because we're in the 21st, 20, you know, century, whatever. And so it's like, how can you know someone, 
you know, this lady that looks so intelligent, whatever, right. how can they, you know, go? So we need to be able to talk about actually that era. That right. Right. Uh, I was about, like I said, I went to live with my grandmother when I was about 13. My mm -hmm. grandmother and my uncles and my grandfather, they raised me. Um, during the same, we're talking back in the um, early 80s. Okay. In the early 80s okay. is what we're talking. And um, by the time I turned 16, 17, I was pregnant with my first child. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, it just kind of stemmed from there. And then I, I still stayed in school and everything. And But then as I ventured out as a young adult, then here we mm -hmm. go. We're talking now. We're approaching 85, 84. Okay. And, you know, in my mindset, you don't love me if you don't abuse me, mm -hmm. you know, and that kind of was my mindset. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how I ended up in the hands of someone that didn't have a problem with showing me that love that I was seeking. Mm -hmm. That kind of love. Yeah, that kind of love. Hands on. Hands on. So now let's just kind of go jump to the chase. I, I told you I had four questions. Okay, no asked. problem. All right. So we say how you got there. Um, so we know that it was history. And because of history and not knowing anything any differently, the type of knowledge that you had, and so what happens is you drift into that same path. The crazy thing about it is, is that I didn't even know I was being abused. Wow. Because it was so normal to me. I didn't, I didn't even, when I used to, my husband broke my jaw one time. I joked and I laughed about it with my cousins because I thought that was so funny. I didn't even know wow. that I was a victim. I mean, it, it was horrible, you know. So that means in the entire environment that you, besides of which you live, we're talking about in the community. There was, that was, it was, it was prevalent horrible. in the community. Okay. Prevalent. I'm talking prevalent, you know, men were, were beating their the pregnant women out in the streets, dragging them, you know, it was just, and when I hindsight, when I look back, I'm like, wow, you know, this is. So what city, what, when, where were we? I mean, you, well, we, the abuse happened in Illinois, okay, right? but the domestic violence happened in Arkansas. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. For a lot of years. Wow. Yeah. So broken jaw, what other kind of injuries that you sustained? Um, I have, um, I have no hearing in my right ear. Okay. Um, he tore my eardrum completely loose. Um, so was it with the hits or blows? It or was what? the blows. It was the blows. Um, and can you remember, are we talking about getting hit with an open hand, a fist? No, we're talking about straight boxing me like I'm a guy. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're talking about that kind of hit. So now, sis, what did you do? This is my question. Well, you know, in the beginning, I was... I was so afraid of him. No, to cause it, what was it that you did or that you said? I that, got up that morning and I breathed. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it had gotten to a point that it's almost like he would get up in the morning and he would be like, oh, man, it's 3 o'clock. I don't have nothing to do. Let, oh, me, wow. let me go do this. You know, because I wasn't doing anything. I mean, um, I had my jaw broken. Um, I'm cut my, my throat has been cut. Um, mm. My finger... The nerves in yeah, his finger has been, yeah, that. from, I had 171 stitches inside and out of my hand. Um, I wear scars under my clothes from me being stabbed while I crawled on the floor trying to seek safety. Um, in my ear, I just recently learned that I had lost majority of my hearing in my left ear as well. Wow. Because over the years, the left ear has done so much work for the right ear. Yeah. So now the left ear is suffering. So, uh, but wow. uh, it's, uh, and then we're not going to even begin to talk about the mental scars. Exactly. You know, so. As well as emotional. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then my children, you know, children don't always, um, they don't always, how do I say, cope the same because mm -hmm. I have two sons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they coped totally different. Because they're two different individuals. Yeah. They cope totally different. So let's briefly talk about that since you've um, since you've opened that particular area okay. with the sons um, uh, on one, the older one. Yes. How was his coping measures with that? Well, I didn't even know, but um, through by way of his book, I learned that 
he was very angry and he was, you know, he, he stayed in trouble a lot. He did a lot of fighting and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I did not know until I read the book that it was because of all the anger mm -hmm. that he was holding for not being able to help me all those years. Wow. And so he said, he, you know, in the book, he talked about how he felt, so, you know, he felt worthless and I mean, self-hate. And I'm thinking, right. all these years, my kid been feeling like this. Yeah. So he, um, unfortunately, you know, because of the way he coped, he was really literally a, a ticking time bomb waiting mm -hmm. to explode. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what happened. So now you're speaking of the he wrote a book. Right. And we're going to get the title of the book? Yes, of course. It's called Domestic Violence. It made me what I'm not. Wow. Yeah, it made me what I'm not. Wow. Yeah. Well, and it's a, I'm sorry. It's and, okay. and it's a memoir, actually. But he has um, two more books coming that are actually books, and we're working on getting them edited and everything That's now. Great. So he's really just telling his story. Yeah. I mean, from as old as he can remember to to what it, you know how he ended up. And well, I had an opportunity, of course, to read the book. Okay. And as I began to read it, I could not put it down. I've heard that. I've actually heard that. His flow of the language in the book. Um, when I wrote in my review, I stated that it was the flow of the wording was as smooth as when you butter boil it mm -hmm. before it's toasted. It his he was so articulate, but yet still he was still so down to earth. Right. And as he script the, the the words on the page you literally could get the visual right here he starts out at seven yeah of you know for what he recalls and then he goes into 10 in areas of where you know he's seeing things happen to you and confused don't know what to do then he states in the different things that he saw that happened to the grandparents right didn't know what to do um but yet and still the gentleman that you married he loved him because of when he was not but he was still a loving person right and he was like he said i've got all these questions right and i have no answers but he still ended up being the protector of someone else and it cost him it did it cost him his freedom it did cost him his freedom it did it did and you know the crazy thing about that is is that when we revisit that and we talk about it sometimes he always say you know ma if if i had to do it all over again he would do it yeah you know he said because all those years he felt like why can't why can't i you know why can't i protect my mom mm -hmm. you know and so he said you know at some point he said well i'm just gonna protect everybody else that i exactly. can exactly yeah when i read the book that's what he said he said what he what he thought about was the fact that he was too little and he was non-existent um and so therefore what he chose to do was to be the protector of the territory right that was more prevalent for him so that was in school when he would see the bullies that would you know right that he would go and, and buck up and, and and i heard in the book he spoke about two different ways i could make you laugh or I could just knock you out. Yeah. <laughs> so either either way I win. Yeah. Yeah. I will win. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that is a very very good book. Very very good. Thank book. you. Thank you. I know okay. that even it, because of the situation that it cost him his freedom, I still know that you're very proud of. I am. I, I often hashtag on Facebook everywhere my hero. Yeah. My hero because he 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 was so un unselfish. He okay. mean selfishly he just. He didn't think about anything. All he was concerned about is I must protect, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and whatever mm -hmm. this costs me, then that's I, what I'm going to have to do. That's what I'm going to have to do. So now what about the younger son? What is, what was his perspective? Um, the younger son didn't cope too well. Okay. You know, he didn't, he didn't cope too well. He has issues okay. that we're trying to work through and, um, underneath him, he's a good kid and, you know, he's just. He wasn't as strong as the as so the oldest. So it affected him more emotionally. Okay. And to be honest, totally the opposite. Okay. He he kind of you know replicates what he saw. Okay. Okay. And sometimes that's that's 
like you said, you have one that will say, this is this is something I'm not gonna ever do. Yeah. And then the other one, the only way that they're able to cope is because sometimes it's because they were so young. Yeah, yeah, he has vivid, I mean, very vivid mm -hmm. memories of it even today. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not that person per se now, but he's still coping with everything that has taken place in our mm -hmm. lives. And he has not, uh, even at this very moment, he has not really been able to process it. Right. Yeah. And so here's the thing that, you know, as we go through and, and talk more to our viewers, many times, whomever is in the midst of this quote unquote domestic violence, they're thinking, well, I'm, I'm the only one that is actually hurting. They're not really realizing that it is affecting the entire household as well as just the entire family. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, the children suffer the most. Mm -hmm. The children suffer the most. Mm -hmm. Because we as adults, we tend to, we have um, a coping mechanism, right. you know. But children, um, they're so vulnerable when it comes to different things. And if, if daddy is hitting on mommy or if mommy's new boyfriend is beating her and, and they happen to have taken them for ice cream, now they're confused. Should right. I like him or should I not like him? You exactly. Know? So children suffer mm -hmm. tremendously. Mm. All right. So here's my next question. Why did you stay? Fear. 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 Um, it's just one day I realized... I wasn't scared or afraid anymore, but mm. it took it took me to have to dig down. And by this time, he had beat me so, he had cheated on me so, he had mistreated me so too. I was more angry than I was afraid. Okay. And so when I finally lashed back out for the first time, it was like, oh, exhilarating. So now, how did you lash back out? That's my question. Well, um, he ended up coming home one night from one of his rendezvous, he, you know, he kept him a woman on the side and he would, you know, he was so tough too. Like on my off days, he would tell me, well, when are you off? And I said, well, Wednesday and Thursday. He said, well, you stay in the house Wednesday and Thursday and don't come outside. Oh my goodness. So he and his girl would sit out in front of the house, his brothers and all, they play cards. They just, you know, and I'm in the window so like a three year old. Oh, uh, were kept as a prisoner in your own home. And in my own home, in my home. So, you know, finally one night I just, in in my spirit, I was like, enough is enough, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And when I lashed back out, I was, I mean, it's like I had stepped outside of myself. I was like, did I just do that? What did you do? That's what I'm just asking. What did you do? Well, I, I ended up having to introduce him to a box cutter. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest with you, that was the only way out that particular night. Right. Because he had made the statement that if he, if he hit me that night, he wasn't going to stop until there wasn't any breath left in me. Wow. So the fear rose and then the anger got even higher mm -hmm. and then at some point i just i just reacted wow i just reacted so let's look out at the audience and this this it's quite a bit to digest right now if there is someone that's in the same situation you're in okay what type of advice would you actually give that person? My advice would be, um, first and foremost, it's not your fault. That's the first thing that we need to know and we need to remember uh, because we tend to self blame and we make excuses for mm -hmm. the abuser. Mm -hmm. It's not your fault. And believe it or not, the abuser is just as afraid as you are wow. because they're really cowards. Mm -hmm. And the abuse is not about you, it's about them. Exactly. It's about what they feel about themselves. Mm -hmm. And they project that on us, on mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So my advice would be, you know, if hey, if he slap you, if he if he if he calls you out your name, if he push you, it's people think step. people think, mm -hmm. oh, that's just a small thing, but that's just a prelude mm -hmm. to what is possible to come. Wow. So my advice would be get out. And if you have children, please don't expose them get the children and get out mm -hmm. as quick as possible as quick as possible because it doesn't take long for something small to turn into something big mm -hmm. and also the one last thing i'd like to say if anyone ever tells you that they're going to kill you believe them believe them believe them mm -hmm. don't 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 make jokes don't laugh about it don't think oh he's just playing no he's not so from all of this victoria 
what have you decided to do at this point in time? I know that there's an awesome program that you're working with. Uh, my son and I, we um, co-founded Shelter from a Storm. Mm -hmm. It's a shelter for domestic violence victims. Uh, right now, we are gearing more towards 16 to 25 years old because a lot of young girls are ending up in abusive right. relationships and right. abusive situations. So we are housing victims and we're not turning anyone away. So when I say, you know, the age limit, I, and I don't mean just women because there are men in abusive exactly. relationships, young and, boys. And that's the reason why I didn't actually stay women because the fact that domestic violence or it, any type of abuse comes. No one is exempt from exactly. it. No one. Exactly. So we have founded the Shelter from a Storm uh, where we house and we educate, we uh, provide resources for spiritual healing. Um, right. um, I'm co-partnering with some other ladies that they do one aspect of it. One lady, she's into the spiritual side and the other lady's into the healing mentally, the yoga and all. Right. And so we just we come together collectively to try to, to, when you leave my place, you have other places to go to continue to thrive. Right. So, you know, and, and, and Shelter from a Storm is changing, so, you know, surviving into thriving. That's big. Yeah. That is so good. That's what we're doing. So if you, how can any of the viewers get in contact with you? You can have my, my website is www.shelterfromastorm.org. Um, I'm on, I have a Facebook page as well, uh, it's Shelter From A Storm. My phone numbers and everything are located on there. Um, and you can go to the website, you can inquire, you can look around, and if you ever need me, don't hesitate to call. My line is always open, 24 hours a day, I'm open. No matter what time of day or night, if you're in trouble, I'll come get you back to come on a skateboard. I'm on my way to get you. So do you have any uh, any ladies now in the housing industry? I do not have anyone now. My latest, I had a couple of women. Um, one of them has gone back to Missouri. Okay. And uh, But right now, anyone that I help, I bring them into my home. Wow. I bring them into my home. <laughs> that is something else. Yeah, it's a little risky at times. But I would much rather know that they're okay versus to leave them out there because of a space, you know. So what has been some of the um, issues that may have come up? I mean, are we speaking about some of the drug users or, you know? You know, they're, they're victims of abuse. And a lot of times women don't think that they can make it without them. Okay. And if you have a woman that she's never really worked, okay. he's paid all the bills all the time. Okay. Sometimes they rather sacrifice that that and go back and mm -hmm. a lot of times they will go back well i don't know how i'm gonna make it well that's why i have these resources to help you mm -hmm. so you can but you know between the fear and what well, he said he'll kill me if i don't come back so that's that's the biggest obstacle you know because it's hard to keep them from from being in touch with them mm -hmm. you know and you know and, and their discretion is very very important in regards to where they are exactly because you have you know guys that'll show up banging on your door and you know right or really act crazy. Right, exactly. Because yeah. that was the very first thing that I thought about when you said in your home, I was like, oh my goodness. Right, right, you know. And just fortunately for me, now if I were to help anyone, I, my son, my 30 year old, he's six, six, three, six, four, <laughs> you know, so he, he can have a lightweight. <laughs> but, you know, I, you know I, I would hate for it to come down to that. Exactly. But that's the biggest problem is, is women secretly talking to the abuser yeah. while you're trying to help them. Yeah. Yeah. I have seen many um, programs that's been like that, you know, they don't want to believe it. It's like, no, he said he loves me, you know, um, he said he'll do this or, or he's giving me this and what have you. And it has been such a brainwashing situation right. yeah. Yeah. to where things become more valuable yeah. than their own life. And it's hard for people on the outside to really realize um, People often say, well, why did you stay so long? And people say, well, honey, like, you know, if I were her, I would leave. You you don't really know that. Yeah, you exactly. Don't, you don't, because when you're in this situation in real time, it's different than when you're sitting out looking at the situation. Because really and truly what happens, especially from different persons that I've spoken with, you lose really all track of time. You just, all it is that you know that you've gotten up and you've moved. You, you can't really even tell how many months has actually passed by. Those things are not even, they're not even relevant. Do you know that statistically, according to the National um, 
Coalition Against Domestic Violence that there is a person, woman, man, boy, girl abused. Um, there are 20 people every 60 seconds. That is 100 people per five minutes. My goodness. And we have a 25 minute, a 30 minute program to you. Do the math. And think exactly. About. Wow. Exactly. And while then, we're sitting here, while we're talking right now, somebody's yeah. being abused. Exactly. <sighs> Guys, just be able to understand that domestic violence is no joke. As I said, it's a situation of being a silent killer. Um, your abuser wants you to stay quiet. Yes. They don't want their business to be out and be told. But if you're in this type of situation, you know, all only thing that we can be able to share with you is get out. Right. Get out. Get out. Um, there are telephone numbers that are here. There are, there are hotlines that, that are available. Do not stay in the situation because it's not worth someone hearing your name on the news. It's not. And you're dead. Yeah. So during this time frame, we just want to be able to share with you. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Thank for you being for having here. Me. Thank you for telling us your story, even um, just opening up your, you know, just your life with everything right. with this. I'm very transparent because I know that what I do could possibly help the next person. Mm. So everyone, if you have a situation that you're in with this, you have, you've gotten, um, I guess, information, we just want to make sure that you get an opportunity to be safe. So again, you'll be able to see us next week for Walking the Past Travel with Lady V. Thank you.